and we see the three of you on the material plane, hands placed on the node, and the node begins, the nodes begin to glow. And then you begin to glow. And the power rises, and the energy increases, and it becomes painful. And then there's a flash. And anyone on the surface sees in the sky that red beacon goes out. And the blue beacon goes out. And the yellow beacon goes out. The green beacon remains, but only that one. The next thing everyone on the surface sees are enormous, incinerating explosions come from the nodes. And when the light fades, there is nothing left. Only Bizdira, unconscious by the eastern node, the key lying on the ground, glowing softly, pulling towards the node itself. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. It's quiet and dark. Peaceful, almost. Three of the colored beams in the sky are gone. That's a good sign. Not perfect, but good. That must mean that some of the siphoning succeeded. You shudder, thinking about that consciousness that so carefully mimicked your own dying in a flood of elemental power. You wonder what their last thoughts were. And then the sun begins to rise and you can see the devastation ahead and behind and you refocus on what lies ahead because there is much to be done. Welcome to this week's episode of The Last Refuge. I'm your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands. And with me, I have... Bizdira. Kit! <laughs> Bria. And... Flick. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Uh... It was all a dream. No, okay. it was all it was all glorp. Glorp. Uh, you all it knew. Was all glorp. You knew how dangerous it was. It was a hard choice to give up those elemental keys, knowing you probably won't be able to get them back for the fight. But I could get mine back. <laughs> yes, yes. Glorp Vizdira is, as we speak, just running across hundreds of miles of ocean. <laughs> Glorps don't get tired, right? <laughs> Bring in the Earth Key, which is useless for Bizdira. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, y- yeah, how, how we doing? There's something to that Glorps don't get tired. There's something, I don't know whether it's like a new campaign. I don't know. There's something <laughs> no, there. No. I don't know. There's something there. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Something. How, how we doing? Good. How we feeling? Uh, Again, I've said nervous every time, but I'm still nervous. <laughs> I mean, look, okay, so this yeah, is... Yeah, I feel oh, like we're ahead. getting more serious now. Like, we've been able to be kind of jokey, and now it's like, okay, we have to kind of start to get serious. Rain it in. Yeah. Well, this is the Focus. first episode that you all are actually playing your current 14th level characters. Yes. Uh, or Flick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the first episode you were the NPCs. The last episode you were your Glorps. Um and now you're finally you. I guess I should say, right? Like, 
I very clearly had scripted parts, right? Some descriptions and things that I wrote out. And you all knew that the Glorp versions of you probably wouldn't survive if you succeeded in siphoning. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's very weird that Bizdira survived because you were either supposed to die by creatures or by the... <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Always um, the one to die. Always. But you, you didn't know who was going to survive and you didn't know what was going to happen on the way there. Mm -hmm. So the scripting sort of ended with like my my cheesy dramatic readings, right? right? Like, <laughs> no, not cheesy. Uh, Good. I mean a little. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Perfect. So now, but now it's now is for realsies. Now you have your character sheets and what happened. Oh, thank you. Yes, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome, welcome back, Bria. Bria's here. <laughs> thank She's you. Back. Thank um, you. You're welcome. so welcome. So now it's now it's real. No. Let's go. Should we go? I'm going to do it. Oh yeah. my God. He's so, listen, this one that I'm nervous, always wants to like, I let go. me banter more. This one in Bria. All right. Let's, <laughs> all right. All right. Let's do I got some, I got some more written descriptions okay. for you. Uh, where are we? Okay. Here we go. Flick. As the morning dawns, you can see thick black smoke mingling with the clouds high above the heart of the world. The wind whips you in the face as you stand at the prow of one of the airships that you were provided with to lead. There are three, and yours stands or floats at the front of a V formation. You are leading the air fleet to the heart of the world. In your fleet, uh, you have the Glorp people who are coming with you. Okay. There are 15 of them per ship, uh, approximately, and each of them, very carefully, contains a little tiny kernel of a delayed blast fireball inside of them. Careful, everyone. <laughs> Steady as she goes. Nobody sneeze. <laughs> Bizdira and Bria, you two lead your own fleets. You two, however, are leading the water ships, which is a funny word to have to say, but we have so many different types of kind ships. Of we have to, yeah. <laughs> Each of you leads a small little fleet of five water ships each. And as you two look around, as the morning dawns, you see flotsam filling the oceans. Detritus from the destruction wreaked upon the world's landmasses in the past few days. You see broken tree trunks, Fragments of buildings and torn vegetation floating haphazardly, even this far from any single landmass. The salt air that you breathe in has a tinge of rot and decay on it. Now, each of you, as I said, is leading a fleet of five waterships. Each of your five fleets carries largely people from the Western Island and some folks from the world below. There are uh, Six up in total between the two of your fleets. There's about 60 kobolds, 40 orcs, 25 yuan ti. They did come through, a few of them anyway. And about 25 assorted folks from the world below. How many yuan ti? 25. And then 25 assorted. Yep. Look at me making notes. I know. <laughs> Everyone's taking notes. <laughs> They're all afraid of me. <laughs> at this point, yes, very much. I'm actually on camera this time, so I have to look like I participate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Kit, you lead your fleet of two submarines. Woohoo! <laughs> submarines! <laughs> your view through the window of the submarine that you're in shows yet another school of undead severed hands floating by. Mm. It's the third that... <laughs> <laughs> It's the third of these schools that you've seen since you departed. You count yourself lucky that you are inside an enclosed space and can't smell them, but you know that all of this death living now in the waters is going to affect that ecosystem somehow. But that's a problem for later. You are currently leading uh, two submarines. Yours contains a functional crew of largely kobolds. But more importantly, the submarine behind you is packed to the brim. Every available inch of space is just shoved full of various undead. Disgusting. Disgusting. Ooh. And they're not like, they're literally <sighs> stacked on top of each other yeah. in there. There are severed hands, there are tar zombies, there are ghouls with the long tongue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Gross. Because there's actually one of their tongues got caught in the hatch and has just been it's flapping just... in the water <laughs> since oh you left. Yes. <laughs> I love that visual <laughs> so much. Just made that up and I'm really happy that it came to me. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, Are the schools of severed undead hands in the ocean part of my fleet of soldiers <laughs> they are not these are the ones that shame. these are the ones that were out there buried on the sand and got collapsed into the ocean as the earthquakes began so they were never oh. under your direct control lovely mm -hmm. but as she goes can she get there to where is she gonna put them the other one's full True. You want to travel with a bunch of now damp, rotting, yeah. severed hands? They're going to they hold on to I, the ship. I am asking the one leading the flotilla I'm, I'm of two. I'm ideas. Of <laughs> <laughs> two. Um, absolutely not. We will leave them in the ocean. <laughs> okay, great. A problem for later, kid. Yes. <laughs> so, you all didn't have any direct connection to the Glort versions of yourselves. Um, but you saw the lights go out. So you know that at least three of them succeeded. And it's morning, so I don't know. Tell me, we're finally, for the first time this season, seeing the real you. What's going on? Um, Bastyr is very disappointed in her Glorp copy. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> would have gotten the word. Well, my Glorp. <laughs> the beam, yes, the beam is still there. Yeah. And she's like, dude, You've been clogged longer than anybody else. Like, <laughs> like, you That's had true. one job. Deep That's connection. True. One job. Deep and you connection to Gordon. Uh, it's true. Trailed it. Maybe um, it's like, you know, when you like you keep create uh, creating something, like it gets a little less and less. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like a clone copies of another of copies, clone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. Uh, how about you up in the air, uh, ki uh, Flick? Well, it's hard comes. to breathe up here. I will say, I'm <gasps> high up in the air, and it's hard yeah, to breathe. Yeah, it's not nice. Um, it, I would say he is just keeping the the highest of watches. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's so paranoid about anything coming out of the clouds or the smoke, and just kind of taking them by surprise, yeah. even though he can't be taken by surprise anymore. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, I think he's just intently not only keeping eyes forward, but also below, because I assume that he's directly above the other fleets. I would think so. I would think that we're kind of traveling in, in three rows. Step. Yeah, just a long row. This yeah. is great. Like all the way through. Robert, we need to change it so that the attack yes, comes directly, exactly. directly above. I was yes. going to say, a nice lightning <laughs> yeah, bolt. Exactly yeah. right. Get us all in one. <laughs> An underwater volcano. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, that too. Both sides. That's, that's what happens great. when I make assumptions. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's right. And I think it's also very right that Flick can't, I mean, for whatever brief instant is glad that the yellow light went out, but can't, 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 can't celebrate it. Right. Can't, yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, how about you, Kit, down underneath the waters? I mean, I assume I can't see that the, <laughs> the lights went oh, out. Oh, I mean, I, I, if you wanted to, I mean, you knew sort of what the timing approximately was gonna have been. So if you wanted to surface to try and, yeah. I put up the oh, little- the little periscope. Yeah, yeah a little like, magical periscope. On? I'm like, oh, good job, self, all right. <laughs> And then we go back down. Yeah. Um, I love this. Yes. <laughs> Whatever we've created here. Yeah, it's my little periscope that I made with my hand for the podcast for any, listeners. Uh, for any bluey parents out there, we've got Sean who is joining us. Oh, that does so, okay. Australia, go on. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, then we quickly dive back sure. under the surface because we have to keep a very close eye out for any horny hydras that might oh, approach. Yeah. True, yes. that's dangerous. That very yeah. important. Can <laughs> we get the horny hydra to fight with us? You had 14 months. <laughs> I think Flick would have put his foot down there. I, think that... I feel Absolutely like. Absolutely. I feel not. like at one point Kit like went underwater and tried to like cast Dominate Beast <laughs> to bring it to our side, and it just like it didn't work. It, it just worked tried out to, too it tried horny. To mate exactly. With you. It was too horny. <laughs> I it just. I probably like the Dominate part. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a Dom, so it was sort of a yeah. um, conflicted. <laughs> Bria, anything we should know about uh, the head of your fleet? Yes, I would love to make a constitution save. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of How course. did I not think of that? 
Oh, it's glorious. What a glorious roll that was. Mm -hmm. I will not be using a luck for that. Good. Uh, <laughs> that will be a three. <laughs> oh, you, like much like Flick, can't enjoy the lights missing from the sky, but not because you're anxious, just because you're throwing up. Right. <laughs> Head um, over the side. And yeah. Everyone on my ship is uh, feels bolstered by that. They really feel like they're being led well, well. I, so I have a question about this because let's be honest, Bria knows it's coming. So mm -hmm. what are the odds that Bria might have like cast some sort of like overlay illusion to try it like the top half of her body continuing to stand up while your front half actually just <laughs> leans over the side and throws <laughs> up. Oh my gosh, Brilliant actually. <laughs> no, maybe, I don't know. I, You know what, I love the idea, but the vomit's gonna come out either well, way. Well, that's, right? true. that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. Just, is everywhere. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. You're going to regret it even more. So, yeah. Um, maybe because of this, though, no. I find a very great. Um, what's like a second captain's name? Um, first officer? A first officer. First mate, whatever. Because of this. Yeah, there's someone who is just shows up and is going to be With awesome for us, and we should definitely name them. All so right. We so, know what um, as you all continue your. <laughs> I was with you, Bria. Yeah, I, I wanted the name. I know you were. You, you all have been traveling for a while now. You knew that it would take some time to get to the heart of the world. Uh, you've, you've done it several times now. Um, you knew that you wouldn't be able to siphon until B-Day. So there's no sense in getting there before that. But you left early so that you could arrive not long after the siphoning took place that first night. So you're close enough now to the heart of the world that things are getting rough, which explains the seasick, right? Storms, whirlpools, <laughs> and schools of hands. Listen, if those get into the propellers, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Sinewy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> gross, God, gross. You just had to, you had yes. to do it. Yes, this is what I do. I know, I know, I love you for it. So we're gonna, we're gonna get you guys navigating through some of these environmental hazards that are popping up along the way. Many of which you've known about, or at least knew were gonna be there in some at some strength, probably worse than you saw before, but, but here they are. Um, so we'll start up in the air. We'll start with Flick and the airships. And it's there is a storm that has rolled in. You've been watching it since the light came up, since dawn broke, and you can see the frequency of lightning strikes is unnatural, and the winds change direction unpredictably. And you know it's coming, but even so, when it hits, it's a lot. So what are you doing to, in the moments before, prepare? And then what are you doing to protect your fleet? And this can be spells, but also we're gonna be making some ability checks here, so so talk it out for me, Flick. Well, I think Ugh, he's going to try and not necessarily calm everyone, but almost like uh, steal everyone's uh, emotions. Okay. You know what I mean? Like okay. uh, sort of get everyone together, d warn everyone yeah. that we have a storm of ruin. Great. And um, I think if you'll allow me yeah. to maybe make like a charisma persuasion I love check that. Absolutely. To, you know, persuade everyone into thinking this is not going to be as bad. As and or to be, yeah, and to be ready and, and ready to do what they got to do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Keep keep the crew calm. I love that. That is a 22. Yeah. When the storm hits, Doing everyone is. <laughs> What'd you get on the die? I think we have to know because Karin's face is amazing. I rolled a nine oh. on the die. No, you didn't. I That's didn't. a six. Oh, I misread. <laughs> That's, this is the problem of us oh, all being yeah. <laughs> Because the six and the nine are so close to each other. So the six, okay, so now yeah, one of them is upside down. It's a 19. <laughs> all right, a 19 is still enough. That's uh, still wild. <laughs> I know. A 19 is definitely still enough. Uh, and when the storm hits, everyone is at their duty stations and ready. Uh, and they weather the beginning, at least, of this storm very well. Let's go down to the water. What's odd is, Bria and Bizdira, you all can see above you this incredible storm, but it doesn't reach the surface of the water. It's, it's isolated to the air. 
You all, however, can see that maybe it's the winds of the storm that are having an effect, or maybe it's just everything else going on in the world, but you see a series of tidal waves, several mast heights high, coming for your fleets. What's the plan? Um... <laughs> uh, and it can be either of you. Uh, Bri, you got any ideas? Uh, I I have two ideas. Great. One of which was pretty similar to Flix. Sorry, I've got my sheets over here, so now I'm gonna be that's okay. That's a okay. bobblehead. Um, one of which was uh, also persuasion, okay. um, but more in the sense of. Um, rallying cry, maybe we do some drumming, that type of thing to oh. like get everybody like excited, whatever. And then also potentially, as I have done on the ships in the past, some investigation to really like get everything prepared, make sure everything is tied, everything is ready to go, so that when we do hit those waves, we're gonna go straight through them like butter. Okay. Well, <laughs> listen, sure that's not uh... how that works, but sure. <laughs> For anyone fishermen out I there. I know a lot about ships. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, clearly. Uh, we, we're going to be making several different checks. So why don't we start? I like the investigation one to keep an eye for like loose riggings or things that are going to be in trouble when the wave hits. A little bit of advanced okay. preparation. So go ahead and do that. Um, Biz, what are you thinking? So I'm thinking um, more in the sense that she would probably be up in the crow's nest. Sure. To give like shout out orders from there. Okay. Tied the rope. The crow's nose. <laughs> sure. Very important. We have Very we've important. managed to slide it into every episode so far. So well um, but she's also she's going to recommend to everybody like hold on to something, grab some rope, do all the things. Um, maybe oh god, like I, my my brain says make the boat back heavy so that it can go up. The tidal wave, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you're going to end up vertical, which is only going to be good until right. a little under 90 degrees, to, yeah, and, and then, then it's going to be like, worse. <laughs> but, like, maybe she walks them through that, like, okay, if we start going up, we need to balance out. We need to do some kind of, Oh, that's interesting. Of, like, so why don't we do... I would take survival for that. I, I would take investigation, but I know you're going to say no. <laughs> Please uh, do God, no. I would take survival <laughs> for that. Survival yeah. and... Um, Listen, you're going to get... You're, okay. you're, everybody's going to be making three different ability checks okay. to get through this, Perfect. so. All right, so Bria, what was your uh, investigation? 26. Yeah, you find, it's a good thing you checked because you find some loose riggings. You actually find a couple of uh, places where the, the tiller on your ship uh, is actually beginning to sort of come loose. And so, and the last thing you need is to lose control of the rudder uh, on this wave. So you, you call to the other ships and they check theirs as well, so. It's a good preparation. How about you, Bizdeer? I got a 21. All right, so yeah, you you are out there and you're sort of watching and calling out, uh, and you're doing maybe a little practice before the first mm -hmm. wave hits, calling out for the crew to rebalance the ship, mm -hmm. either with themselves or by pushing some of the supplies and yeah. crates that you've got. I like it. Okay. Let's get below the water and get to Kit. Kit, the first thing that you see coming is a whirlpool, uh, which you knew was coming, but this one is bigger than any that you saw the first time around. It is incredibly wide across uh, and incredibly deep. Uh, what's the plan? Um, I think I have a new favorite spell. Oh, tell me And it's me called more. Control Water. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see why. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so I would like to try to use yeah. this to redirect okay. the whirlpool. Great. Um, which is, so a feature of the spell is that you can redirect the flow of uh, the water. Um, so I think it's like a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a creative take on yeah. how this might work. But even perhaps if it's not moving the whirlpool away, I can use it to like guide the ships around the world. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I like it. Let's let's go ahead and do a spell casting ability modifier, so a, a wisdom check. Right. Um, which isn't, yeah. I'm gonna use the different. Side. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use the water one. Oh, good. Oh, it's so pretty. Ooh, so yes. pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can definitely see it in the yeah, video. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that was a mistake. Uh, it's an eight. <laughs> okay, so you're unable to redirect the whirlpool, but what you do do is manage to get the two submarines in like a safe part of, of the flow that you're redirecting. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and do, I think, uh, if I may, I think survival mm -hmm. to sort of watch the currents Absolutely. and the spell will give you advantage. Oh, advantage. 
advantage. Oh, I'm also gonna need you, before you do that, to roll percentile, because uh, oh, you cast no! a leveled spell, oh. and it is oh. the solstice. Oh, Moon magic. All right, let me get, let me get that. Where is it on my device? It's here. That is a good question. Oh, I'm so excited. We haven't rolled on this yet. I am very scared. This could go terribly this wrong. This could be amazing. <laughs> Uh, that is a 59. <laughs> Please don't oh, be a fireball. Uh, so you cast the spell, but you still feel that well of magic ability inside of you. You regain your lowest expended spell slot, which yes. was that one. Hooray! There you go. Uh, all right, now let's have that survival check with advantage. All righty. Um, so that is going to be a... <laughs> oh my god, I just forgot how to do math. <laughs> <laughs> Good time. Thank you. A 22. Great. All right. So you're able to direct that current along the edge of the whirlpool. It's it's a little bit like you do some Gs, right? Cuz you're flung yeah, yeah. around it. Uh but you but you managed to do it. Let's uh let's go back to the air. Uh the storm has hit in full now. What's happening next? There are lightning strikes everywhere. The wind is battering the this the flying sails. What are you doing, Flick? Um, my instinct is now to fly ahead of the ship. This, I have two, right? Three. You got three, yeah. Three ships, uh, fly ahead of them and try and find the best way out of this storm to try and navigate oh. us out of, like, wherever the clouds are weakest, wherever the, there is less lightning, wherever. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I'm going to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Either wisdom insight or survival. I think that do feels it. more survival. Okay. Uh, so let's do, do that. that. And then, uh, yeah, do that first. That is another six on the die, so that is a 19 survival. Okay. Now make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kid is losing it. I'm just <laughs> deeply affected by those modifiers. <laughs> this is like you're in your, your um, the perception. Your passive perception now. Yeah, except yeah, those are rolls. Yeah, but now his is better than mine. <laughs> I know, it's, it's better. It All right, it's what, Flick, what'd you get? It's a 24 deck save. 24 on the deck save. Okay, so <laughs> you uh, you do manage to avoid the worst of the lightning, but you do take 15 lightning damage okay. as the charged air around you and also successful Ooh. save has the damage of lightning. Okay. So, <laughs> um, but you are able to find a decent path out, a path that where you find the least strikes of lightning uh, and so, so far that ship manages to, the ship or your fleet manages to get through without too many problems. I imagine I also signal them with my flute. They follow the, oh, the sounds yeah. of the music through the lightning it's and the thunder and all that. definitely loud enough to get <laughs> through It's definitely loud. All right, know? water ships. <laughs> uh, Bria and Bizdira, uh, the waves have hit in full. You've managed to ride one, uh, but more are coming. Uh, and you can also see, excuse me, that some of these waves are just ending. They are mid crest in the middle of the ocean, which makes no sense. The waves shouldn't be cresting in the middle of the ocean anyway. And sometimes it will be at its crest and then just whoosh, fall without finishing. What's the plan? Uh, that makes my stomach turn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do we need another were we able real to quick? get um, uh, <laughs> slow fall or feather fall tokens for the actual no. ships? Although I do think it's very funny if you gave them to the people on the ships, because the ships <laughs> crash down and the whole crew just slowly. <laughs> By the time they get down, the ship's already gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, can she use like an insight to look ahead and just keep trying to give the crew as much information as possible? Like, this is what's happening. This is what we need to prepare for you know, you guys go over there, go over there, like... And, I mean, insight is to sort of detect the the mood and veracity of someone mm -hmm. and what they're thinking, so this sounds more, more to like me like... Perception. I would take perception, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you roll that up. Bria, how about you? I want to do my drumming thing, if that's cool. Oh, yeah, now, yes, you see this coming, the crew is afraid, and now feels like the perfect time for a persuasion check from you. Perfect. Bria, uh, Bizdira, how'd you do? I got a dirty 20. Nice, all right. So yeah, you're able to really sort of track the, you find patterns in the seeming chaos, right? You spot, oh, in fact, this is sort of happening at this rate and whatever, and you're able to, to advise the crew. Guide them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bria, how'd you do? 
I also rolled a six that was not a nine, um, <laughs> and that was a twenty-two. Kit, did you uh, you hear that? Six I turned into a twenty-two. <laughs> I was ignoring it. I was choosing to tune it out because oh, it. Oh, I ruined it. Then everyone. sorry, it's just very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is going so much better than your glort people did. Uh, you've managed to get uh, to get through the second one. Let's go back underwater. Kit, you have managed to slingshot around this whirlpool, but now you see the fourth and largest swarm of hands. And you're not sure, at, with the speed that you have been flung from this whirlpool, you're not sure if you're going to have time to totally miss all of them. And like I said, I wasn't kidding earlier. They'll wreak havoc on your propellers. Uh, but there is still a chance. It's not impossible for you to avoid them. What do you do? What do I do? Um, I don't know that I want to cast another spell because I'm <laughs> afraid again. Yeah. We're back to season oh, one. Oh, we're back today. to season one. Um, <laughs> We've made it so far. We've made it so far. Listen, I'm in a submarine. If I cast off a fireball not in a submarine, hey, not good. it's not going to be good. <laughs> so I think um, that I run to the, you know, to the... Is it the cockpit if you're in a What did submarine? we decide? I know we We've done this before. This. The bridge. I the think bridge. we decided on the bridge. I yeah. run to the bridge and I uh, would like to use my, uh, you know, my proficiency with nature to try to oh. to take over the the wheel, the steering wheel. Do we have one of those in a submarine? Sure. They, I, listen, it's magic. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> and I would like to try to the predict helm. how the currents are going to go so I can try Yeah, to okay. Them. This is another like predict the currents, but through yeah. your familiarity with nature. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. Let's have a nature check. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, can I do math today? That's a 25. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. You are. You see again, like, like Bizdira, you find the patterns in the chaos. Uh, and you're able to, you're able to, I mean, it's close, right? I mean, if you can, you, if you feel like you can smell them, uh, you can't, but like, it almost feels like you can smell them be that close as you pass by. You all are almost through. You can see the end of the storm and the waves and the hands. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> hands. Hands. Um, but you're not done yet. You got to get just a little further. The crews are exhausted but working hard. They are buoyed by your successes so far, by your near misses but successful. Flick, what's our last thing to get through the end of the storm? I'm so tempted to try and bolster up my crew's uh, confidence. Oh. With a performance check. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm a bard, right? It's I gotta a, like go for it. I feel like you do. And we have, I mean, only like half proficiency here, so this is like we're really taking a chance. You know? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just kind of just clarify something. Jack of all trades. Right, you're a bard that isn't proficient in performance. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's my favorite. Go on, mediocre. Amazing. Roll it, mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a nine. Oh. <laughs> So it truly is mediocre. Okay. <laughs> so here's what happens. It's actually not. Oh. It's great. It's maybe too good. It's so good that it distracts <laughs> one of the airship captains. Oh, no. What? <laughs> no. Who oh. is not holding on to their helm, to their tiller as, hard, as, as closely as they should be. And the ship begins to drift. And before you can stop it, that ship turns and is struck by a lightning bolt. No. And a second later, 15 delayed blast fireballs explode. No! <gasps> so, uh, Brienne Bizdira, you see this happen. You see one of these airships explode and begin to crash down to the waves. And that is the obstacle that you two now have to get your fleets out of the way of. What do you do? Um, I wanted to use acrobatics anyways on my side. So, <laughs> so, you, so you personally, Bria, are going to flip out of the way of the falling airship. Okay, fine, fine, fine. No, no, no. I'm, listen, I'm not saying stuff. you can't use acrobatics. I just want an explanation. <laughs> no, did you hear my joke that I want to use stealth instead? <laughs> She's just going to hide from them. She's just going to hide. <laughs> if it can't see me, it can't fall on me. Exactly. Um... I'm going to give you a minute, Bizdira. What are you doing? <laughs> so I'm so mad because I was going to do the same thing as Flick and bolster my people with a performance check. I mean, you can use it to focus them so okay. that they, they you know, don't don't focus on the falling airship. So, 
I'm gonna, so then that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start screaming out a speech of like, we knew this, <laughs> we were gonna have casualties, we knew we were gonna do this, we have to keep going, we have to survive for the rest of them, we have to move. All right, let's have that performance check. Oh, God, thank goodness for the banjo, let me tell you what. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a 15. All right, before I tell you what happens, Bria, what is your, uh, explain acrobatics. No, I, I will do, I'll, I'll do perception um, to see ah, where everything is going, to great. lead everyone to where they need to go. Absolutely, go for it. You crit. Did you do it? I crit. Yes! Yay! Okay. So, so we actually do do some motherfucking acrobatics. <laughs> <laughs> One of the ships leaps out of the air and flips around out of the way. Like a <laughs> um, so Bria, your fleet uh, manages, I mean, as one tacks to the side uh, and you are able to to miss the falling ship. Uh, Bizdira, unfortunately, two of your ships get sort of a mixed signal about what direction to turn and collide with each other. And 15 yuan T and 15 world belowers are lost as two of the ships sink. But, all in all, with a total of 15, yes, 15 vessels, you only lost three. Could be worse. <laughs> and ahead, as you break through the final lines of the storm and the waves and the hands, it's still funny to me. <laughs> oh, we haven't done yours yet. I was about to let you off the hook. I was not going to say anything. Um... So there's a lot of debris between the airship and the two crashed water ships. There's a lot more flotsam underwater Great. kit to avoid. What you doing? So what was pointed out to me by story consultant Robert Hump oh is uh, <laughs> that control water is a concentration spell that lasts for 10 minutes so I can keep using it without having to roll Great. on the chart again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I love so it. So this time, rather than control the currents, mm -hmm. I would like to create a whirlpool of my own that's going uh, to pull yeah. all of the debris out of my way. Um, and yeah. um, perhaps... What about Arcana? It's magic. Yes, absolutely. To make sure that you can shape it to grab the debris, but not the submarines. Yes. I love that. Give me an Arcana check. Um, Go it is Matt. You're using that too. spell. Take advantage. Ha ha. All right. Twenty-seven. All right. So, yeah. out of fifteen different vessels, you managed to only <laughs> lose three. <laughs> <laughs> and as you get through the storm and the waves and the debris this time, uh, you all can see the heart of the world finally ahead of you. And it doesn't look great, but at least it's not the open ocean any longer. Thank the Jesus. <laughs> now, what is the plan for arriving? You all have mentioned before that you hope to make your sort of base camp in that elemental earth cave, but you got to get there. Mm. So what's the plan? Well, we got to find it first because we know that Topography changes and Correct. it's changed probably pretty drastically oh, yeah. since the last time the we beach were here. is gone. You know there are new sort of little coves that are not the same as what you landed on the first time, uh, Bizdira and Kit. Uh, yeah, it's it's a different looking island. Is this something that Flick could see from above, or can be one of his assignments from above? Yeah, absolutely. I will ask what the where are so are you like. <laughs> Flick, I suppose, could hope to find a place to land the airships close to the cave, but the submarines and the waterships aren't gonna make it to the center. So what's- Wait, what's we the... didn't install- like, Listen, Bria. <laughs> <laughs> so what's How the- How many months, 14 months? What's the disembarkation, <laughs> 14 months. What's the disembarkation plan for these ships? I mean, is it just get people off wherever you can and then wander through the woods? I mean, is it so wild to think that we land the ships and the submarines and we wait on the, the whatever the beach situation is and yeah. then the airships ferry people back that, and no, forth. No, I think that's initial plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Okay. So as you all are uh, disembarking your various vessels and there are, I mean, there's still eight water ships left and then, the, and then you just have to start yanking undead out of the submarine. Oh, Feet first, you know what I mean? Shooting them out the torpedo tubes. And Every once in a while, we assigned that to? Yeah, that's the question. But it's definitely shooting them out of the torpedo tubes. And I imagine that Bizdira is like running around to catch it. Sorry, I hit the mic. Sorry, I'm too excited. <laughs> that was, that's great. I love that. I love that very much. 
It's like catching all the hands. Yeah, yeah. Hey kid, hey kid. High five, high five. No. <laughs> Take inspiration. <laughs> You know, he's going to keep doing that, so just I know, I, had, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> she, to be fair, she hasn't failed a role yet today, so, well. Um, all right, so that is going on. Flick, let's talk a little bit about this recon, then, sure. of the airships. Now, are you taking all two of your remaining airships? Uh, I think I think we should go one at a time, but one leaves, like, the first one leaves. We gather up as many people as we can carry. Mm -hmm. One leaves. Sure. And then, is there a way, friends, that is there some sort of, oh, I can use a new spell. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cast, at the risk of some wild magic something or other happening, um, <laughs> a telepathic bond um, oh. amongst us four. Okay. And who else do we trust that's with us? Who's our like highest? most trustworthy or who's gonna My go officer that we didn't name. first officer your first officer is either <laughs> sniff or drank's pick drank's oh i don't want either of them to get hurt i don't want them to be with us <laughs> did you see her face <laughs> <laughs> i i listen you can make your decisions about drank's i think he would object to not being included yeah, on this sure. I, yeah. I i think sniff is the most experienced captain yeah. Yeah. in the world <laughs> i think he True. has to go with you sniff drank's okay. us four and we have two more people that we can have this I mean, bond with. I mean, at this point, it's it's a little bit of a bond to just keep notifications open. Sure. So like, if we need to toss two more people in in the moment, that's amazing. amazing. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna go ahead and cast that. And also, I guess, roll, roll percentile. Here we go. I'm so excited. All right, All the right. number is a 27. Fine. Um, <laughs> what is you it? feel your magic quicken, mm. and for the next minute all of your spells that have a casting time of one action can now be cast as a bonus action well i'm not casting any more spells in the next minute because i'm too nervous yeah. to. <laughs> that's, that's like a nice. problem um all right so you have the telepathic bond open so that way once one arrives once we find the cave mm -hmm. which i will kind of again be the scout for that initial fairy great um we'll find the cave and then immediately when we do and we unload everyone on the next ship that has already been loaded up oh. will, will kind of switch off yeah. and start ferrying people that way. There is one more person who I will say is with that first ferry. It's your sister. Okay. She offered to help. That's fine. And she feels like what she can do is scout around. She's good at that. Mm. And she's heard you all talk about this earth cave and she has fairly strongly insisted upon scouting it before you go in to make camp. She is familiar in a, in a very small way, right? But she's familiar with the planes. She was attuned to the Earth Key, so she has a certain connection there. Makes sense. And she wants her contribution to be that she scouts out the cave before you try and set up camp. Sure. So she's with you on that first ferry. In that conversation, just instinctually, I think he's gonna be a little, I mean, he's gonna be- I mean, yeah. A little skeptical. And and she probably notices and doesn't care. You're welcome to address <laughs> it with her, but she like, she doesn't, I mean, she, the way she has do, had this conversation, she wasn't asking or even suggesting. Mm. Okay. You, now listen, you all are who you are. You certainly can do what you want to do and say what you want to say, but she seems to, feel like she's not brooking any disagreement here. I'm definitely not going to contradict her, but I, I <laughs> definitely would like to roll an insight sure. check sure. just to, you know, make doubly sure that she's not going to do. Wait, I lost the number. Where did it go? It was the 20. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Was it? It, it was. Oh. was like, That's it. why I was so excited. And then there was, was like, no <laughs> response. And I was like, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So that's a crit, uh, which means it's a 33. I mean, yeah, you know your sister well also, right? Like you you are the hope that she gets to survive and get out of here, mm -hmm. right? I don't, I think there's no doubt that she doesn't intend to stick around. She's not super keen on the idea of like living in a world saved by you four. Well, but if, if the world doesn't survive this, she's not leaving. Well, then she is, well, this doesn't matter. Uh, his instinct would be that she is also in the telepathic bond then. Sure. But it doesn't last. It doesn't oh, go through planes. planes. Oh, well. So but, but if she also... finds it, then I will feel the disconnection. Well, and... she, but it's not, she's not looking for it. She's going to scout oh, it scouting. once you find it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So she'll come out or she won't come out, I guess, if there's a problem. 
scary. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's have uh, let's have some I guess perception checks from you, Flick. Uh, let's let's start with one to see if you can sort of figure out where this cave was. You know about where it was before, and the topography may have changed, but it looks like uh, on the edges of the island maybe, but most of like the interior hasn't shuffled around. Shuffled around, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that there are valleys where there weren't valleys and mountains where there weren't valleys. The first one is a 16. It takes an hour and you still haven't found it. I'm going to use one of my precognitions for this next one okay. to give me advantage. Yeah, absolutely. The first roll is a 2. <laughs> the second one is a 15 plus 13. 28. So you are able to, you sort of, you focus in on the spell, uh, the, the Sumer scale, uh, on the divination magic therein, and you get a little bit of a flash of what the location around the cave looks like now. And so you set your scouts or whatever, your lookouts on the ship to look for very specific uh, landforms and somebody spots it. And you're able to go down and begin unloading. <clears throat> your sister goes in uh, and you know says, you know, give me however long. And if I'm not back out, you should probably find another place for camp. Okay. As you all are ferrying across, when do the three of you go? Flick, Kitten. I mean, uh, Kitten, Bizdir, and Bria. How many trips do you think it'll take? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you cram the undead, one, two. I imagine you want to split up the Glort bombs as much as you can. Reasonably. After that yeah. performance yeah. that just happened? I yeah. think it's going to take... Well, let's make it easy. Let's say three more trips. Yeah, so I think like we split up between the three. Okay, who's on the second ferry? I'll go. All right, Bri is on the second one. Who's on the third? On the third, I, I just want to get all of the undead like okay. together on huh. one, which I think will take a while. But if we think that. If there's one waiting for the oh, signal to come back. You know what? If you want the undead, if you think the undead are going to take a while, it should probably be the second one because they're still looking for the yeah. cave at okay. that point. Okay, then I think that makes that Okay, makes the most sense. that makes the most sense to me too. Okay, so Kit's the second one, then Bria, you'll take third. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I'll then. take up the rear. All right. Um, Kit, actually, all of you, the three of you, perception checks, please. Uh, Kit, what'd you get since you're on the first one? Are you taking passive? I will for this, yes. 19. Okay. <laughs> Bria, what'd you get? Uh, 24. Okay, great. And Bazir? Uh, we're going to say passive as well, so a 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kit, as you are going in, you're looking out, just getting a sense of the rest of the terrain, what you can see. You don't spot anything particularly out of the ordinary other than there are confusing weather patterns here. Of course, the whole of the island is is covered by a dark storm. Uh, so it's never more than dim light at best here on the central island on the, in the heart of the world. Um, but you see a couple of times, you see these vortexes of what is clearly ice and polar wind because you watch as they sort of sweep across the island and occasionally just freeze whole copses of trees solid. Uh, and the, they extend pretty high up into the air. Uh, several times you need to sort of tack the ship or maybe even fly a little higher to go over these enormous cylindrical vortexes. Bria, as you are traveling with your ferry, uh, you see a couple of things down on the ground that are happening. You see occasionally there are whole areas of the ground that all of a sudden just turn to sand and mud, and you watch as rocks and any small creatures just sink into the ground, unable to escape it. Also, occasionally, and sometimes really close to these things in ways that don't make a ton of sense, but you occasionally will just see whole swaths of the ground turn to magma. It's not lava, you can walk on it, it's, it's semi-solid and in places cooler than others, but you see that the ground is ablaze suddenly. Bizdira, it's a lovely trip. <laughs> Breeze in my hair. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's great. Thanks. Not long after you arrive with the final shipment, and I assume the airships are... Well, I don't know. You tell me. What's happening with the airships? Is the cave large enough to... Is it Not to small? go inside. I mean, there's a place where you could, in theory, land them outside the cave if you wanted to keep one nearby. But of course, with all this that friends have seen, 
a bit of a toss up. I'm afraid to anchor them in the sky because I, I think they'll be blown away or something yeah. of the sort. Yeah. Um, I think probably landing them and maybe tying them down to... In the island, are you going to land them out with the rest of the fleet? I out on the, on the, on the friends, coastline? I, land or water? I think... Uh, I, my instinct says land and not to have all of our eggs in one basket, you know what I mean? Okay. Well, in that case, nobody's going to be on them but me and one other person so that we can anchor them and then whoever that is gets on the back of my broom and I take us back to the cave, no? Yeah, can, oh, that's fine, yeah. Or I can go with you and then I can just oh. wild shape. Wild shape, sure. I think that's great, sure, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so the ships, the fleet, the, the full fleet is all being anchored by the coast, that's great. That's probably the safest thing for the ships. Probably. All right. Um, so in that case, it's not long after you return, you two return, um, that you're waiting, you're still waiting for your sister to come out. And it's getting it's getting later in the day, it's getting close to the allotted time that she gave you. But then you hear footsteps, and she steps out of the cave, and she tells you that she has found a suitable place to set camp. It's pretty deep in. If you go deep enough in this cave, it eventually opens onto She's not sure if it's the full plane of Earth or a little demi-Earth plane, but but an open space where you could set up a decent camp. So there were a few things that she had to take care of in there, but she has taken care of it. There's um There's a little surprise. There's a there's a catch, but it's it's fine. Come on in. Y yeah, we should go. <laughs> we should go explore what's going on. Yeah. I, I, Kit may disagree. No, she's not going to tell us. She's just saying, come on in. <laughs> she, j I mean, she sort of is like, I don't, there's no, I mean, just, yeah, come it's on. It's not immediate, right? Like, we're no. not, okay. No. Do we is need to prepare anything? Uh, she says, no, 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 it's like, it's all fine. Okay. He's fine. E? e? Okay. Oh my gosh. Broom, go through the cave. <laughs> Bazir is a very uncomfortable. <laughs> So you all follow her. Are you bringing everyone or just the four, the four of you first? I think everyone. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Great, so everybody's yeah. following behind you. And you wend through this cave's tunnels for a while and eventually you feel the difference, right? Even when you cross in, you can tell as before, right? That there is a difference here. You are in a different place on a different plane. But the deeper you get, the more strongly you feel the weight of the ground underneath you, the more sort of solid everything feels. And eventually, the cave opens up and you see floating earth motes and beautiful rock formations, stalactites and stalagmites and, and different small alcoves and and caves and tunnels in this enormous space, too big to really measure easily. And then you hear, and suddenly a lighting in the center of the space in front of you is an enormous, looks like a blue dragon, but it's different. It's definitely a dragon. But it isn't a blue dragon, it's done. Filled with lightning, it has spikes on its back that seem to be not connected to its body. They're sort of floating there, as if caught in some sort of gravitational pull. And its scales are not just blue, they're almost a sort of gem color. Let me have nature checks from everyone. I will also accept Arcana, if that's better for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is your... Uh... <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Uh, flick. 16. All right, Bria. 12. And Kit. I crit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That feels good. <laughs> Kit, you cannot believe what you are seeing. These in your home back in Faerun are almost myth. They are so rare. And certainly you never expected to see one here. This is one of the five gemstone dragons, gem dragons. This is a sapphire dragon. 
And with that crit, you know a little bit about sapphire dragons. Sapphire dragons live primarily solitary lives uh, underground. They have incredible psionic, which is magic of the mind. They have incredible psionic control over stone and earth. It's a little unusual to find one not in the material plane. Dragons are inherently creatures of the material. So it's a little strange that this one's here. But the other thing you know, and you begin to maybe see why this dragon is so willing to share this space with you. Sapphire dragons are often fascinated, if not obsessed, with history. Big battles, historical uh -huh. events, world-changing moments. And as you sort of realize all of this, the dragon alights and says, oh, Welcome. Try not to be too loud. <laughs> and the sister explains very quickly to you in hushed tones that she had to make a deal. And the deal is only that each day that you are here, the dragon expects you to give it a full report of what is happening. Because this dragon has seen many rises of the beast. And as far as it's as far as he's concerned, they've all been the same. The beast comes, the beast eats and destroys, the beast goes to sleep. But your sister was persuasive and has convinced the dragon that even if the outcome isn't different this time, the process will be much more interesting. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> can we ask this sister, like, can we, in, in our hush tones, sure, hush. Um, <laughs> I want to ask the sister, like, can we, is this dragon, A, does it have a name, B, Will it let I, us listen, ask him some questions? I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you knew someone was going to ask no, for the name of the I dragon. No, I didn't, because then if I'd known that you were going to ask, if I'd thought about it, then I would have named it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your own fault. You should know us by now. It's been five and a half years. Yes, you know? because definitely the detail that I needed to spend the last couple of days focusing on was the name of the dragon. <laughs> well, you ha we can There are you. so many. No. Generators, name generators Same. out there. Come on. Yeah, and anyway. we also frequently ask the names of the things that we Everything. encounter. Everything. We like to address the beings that we speak to by their names. It's only right. Or if the All dragon. All right. Anyway, what's your if other the point? The dragon <laughs> prefers a title rather than a name. That's oh yes, he too. prefers sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> sir, <laughs> can I ask you a question? All right, would this dragon be willing to tell us? more about no. the beast. Mm -hmm. No. Even, she already asked. Even like what it looks like? No. Nothing. Uh she asked that question. Uh -huh. She well she asked the question of can you what can you tell us? And Ooh. it said no, I don't get involved, I observe. She asked what it looked like and all she can tell you is she it he gave her a strange look as if the question almost didn't make sense. Hmm. Are we fighting an invisible beast? I know you're not asking me. That so. is, is that her only condition? Is that we give him, or um, his, yeah. Is that his only condition? Mm -hmm. That we give him reports? Mm -hmm. And we keep our voices down? Mm, yeah, and you keep your voices down, yes. I mean, it does, it, listen, be... it's bad enough that you're disturbing yeah. it. That's good for me I mean, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Yeah. That's great, actually. That's, a, that's the sounds, only way our story fantastic. is going to survive, so. Right. Oh, God, Bria. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Jeez. All right. I'm, I will agree to those terms. Yeah. Absolutely. It seems yeah. safe here and we've, you know, bunkered down here before. So we can say, yes, we'll give it to you through music. All right. I'll do it. Let's, yes, you can do it, but I want to do something else right now uh, in our last couple of moments. Uh, it is late. Uh, you all are exhausted. It has been a long day. The crew worked very, all of your crews worked very hard. And I think. Kit has something special for tonight. Yeah, so I think Kit looks around at her friends and the army that we've amassed, and um, well, actually, yes, but even though not everyone can participate. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> everyone will, will eat, not everyone yeah. will 
eat the magic stuff. Um, <laughs> Kit would like to prepare a feast yeah. to thank everyone uh, for you know joining us to try to save the world. And so out of her backpack, she pulls this very ornate and like jewel encrusted bowl that no one's ever seen before. And everyone's like, where did that come Where'd from? Where'd you get that? Exactly. <laughs> and Kit's like, oh, well, one day where I, when I was doing my gardening, I like hit something hard. And when I when I like dug it up, it was it was this bowl. And I figured I'd save it for a special occasion. And that special occasion is right now. And so I place the bowl in the center of all of us and bring my staff down on top of it. Um, and as I do, through my staff, you see pools of magic kind of falling off of the leaves of the staff. And we all sit down and we take our time and we enjoy the food and each other's company. I think Flick probably plays us a couple of songs. Sure. Um, and after an hour, everyone feels just a little bit more fortified. And as you all sit down to this beautiful hero's feast that Kit has conjured up, that's where we're going to leave it for this week. Thanks so much for listening or watching this week's episode of The Last Refuge. Be sure to tune in next week to find out what happens next with the crew now that they have arrived in the heart of the world. You can reach out to the TLR team by leaving us a podcast review or by dropping us a line on Twitter and Instagram at, at DND Last Refuge. That's at D, the letter N, D Last Refuge. And if you've got more than 280 characters to say to us, you can also email us at dndlastrefuge at gmail.com. Remember, you can catch the premieres of every episode this season live on Wednesdays at twitch.tv slash dmjazzyhands. We're going to be playing the videos there on Wednesday evenings. Myself and other company members will be around in the chat to watch alongside you. And then if you can't make the live premieres, the video feeds and the podcast audio will be dropping on Thursdays. As always, I want to thank Robert Hupp, my story consultant for this campaign, and of course, all of you for listening and watching. I'm your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands, and with me, I have... Ms. Dira. Kit, Bria, and Flick. Happy gaming, y'all.